In one of the other explanations, you have already learned that the wind wants to flow over the surface of the earth from a high to a low pressure area. Because of the Coriolis effect, the wind gets a deviation. According to the law of Bage Ballet, this deviation in the northern hemisphere is to the right, with the wind in the back, and in the southern hemisphere to the left, with the wind in the back. The wind therefore does not flow in a straight line from the high pressure area to the low pressure area. But what happens then? If the wind in the northern hemisphere wants to flow from a high pressure area to a low pressure area, a deviation will take place to the right and arrive southeast of the low pressure area. At that point the air wants to flow to the low pressure area, but the wind also has a deviation to the right, so the air particle flows to the north and arrives northeast of the low pressure area. Now the air still wants to go to a low pressure area, but the wind still has a deviation to the right. The air flows to the west and arrives northwest of the low pressure area. Now the air still wants to flow towards the low pressure area, but here too the air has a deviation to the right, so the air flows to the south and ends up southwest of the low pressure area. A kind of spiral uh, shape develops in which the air slowly gets closer to the low pressure area. Eventually the air fills the low pressure area, but it goes very slowly. Although the air in the northern hemisphere gets a deviation to the right, we see in this example that the air rotates counterclockwise around the low pressure area in the northern hemisphere. The air is turning counterclockwise. This is precisely a satellite image of a hurricane, which is actually one large low pressure area that can show this well. In a high pressure area in the northern hemisphere, the situation is reversed. Air wants to leave the high pressure area and gets a deviation to the right. The air rotates clockwise around the high pressure area and leaves the high pressure area only slowly. So remember that in the northern hemisphere the air around a low pressure area flows counterclockwise and around the high pressure area clockwise. Now we are going to take a look at the southern hemisphere. There the air flows to the left with a deviation. Here too air flows from the high pressure area over the surface to the low pressure area. The deviation here is to the left, so the wind ends up northeast of the low pressure area. The wind then wants to move towards the low pressure area, but there is also a deviation to the left, viewed from the direction of the wind. The air flows to the south and ends up southeast of the low pressure area. The air then wants to flow again to the low pressure area, but here too the wind has a deviation to the left. The air flows to the west and ends up southwest of the low pressure area. Then the air wants to go to the low pressure area, but the wind still has a deviation to the left. The wind flows to the north and lands northwest of the low pressure area. In the southern hemisphere, the air revolves around the low pressure area clockwise. For the wind around the high pressure area, the situation is the other way around. The wind flows out of the high pressure area, gets a deviation to the left and thus flows counterclockwise, so to the left, leaving the high pressure area. We can now say that in the northern hemisphere the wind around a low pressure area rotates counterclockwise and around a high pressure area clockwise. In the southern hemisphere the air revolves around a low pressure area clockwise and around a high pressure area counterclockwise.